Well, what I do with my setup is uh, I have a main snare drum, which is uh, my custom painted drum uh, by Willard Snow, and it's a solid maple snare I got from Gretsch. And then I've got my Mark Schulman signature drum as my secondary drum, and then I use the big fat snare, which is like a big pad. Actually, I've got one here. So I use something like this. If I want a lower sounding drum, I throw it on there, and you know, the sound of the regular drum might be a little, you know, kind of middle. You throw this on, and it lowers the pitch. And it freaks people out, because so many drummer friends say, man, what is going on? All of a sudden that snare sounds like a big fat like ballad drum. Well, that's because I'm putting that, essentially putting the head in it. And by putting that coating on, it drops the pitch of the drum about a third. So I have three different snare drum sounds. And then Gary is the... I have Gary Grimm as my drum tech. Gary is the greatest tech on the planet, bar none. He's worked with everybody from Steve Jordan to... Uh, Peter Erskine to Steve Gadd. He was Jeff Percaro's last tech before he passed. And me! I'm in good company, right? And Gary has built a little, little, it actually, it's a snare carriage that has a piece of foam that holds it so it's got its own little carriage. And I'm just constantly switching stuff out. You do a lot of uh, mallet swells. Um, I'm not using any brushes on this particular gig I have before. And then I come out front at one point and I've got the what I call the cocktail kit on steroids. And in, th I think it was three days, Paul Cooper at Gretsch made me this kit. I mean, it was unbelievable the turnaround because of what I want is I wanted a little snare, like a five by 12 or a four by 12. Then I wanted two huge floor toms. I wanted an 18 by 18 and an 18 by 24. Somehow he had one of those shells. They coated it in the same coating as the kit that I'm using on stage, which is black diamond pearl. And so now I come up front and we do this acoustic thing. And it's sort of like a, an imagined dragon that's very sort of, uh, it's all all mallets. Originally, I was going to try to put a little bass drum, make it a real cocktail kit, but it just wasn't big enough. So I come up front and I'm playing this little 12 by 5, 18 by 18, and 18 by 24, and they're tuned really, really low. And one of the songs I play with mallets, one of the songs I play with sticks. Oh, I play no, I play with one stick and one um, uh, dowel stick. So it just gets this kind of cool sound. Gary checks everything. He does all the line check, checks everything individually. Then we do our sound check. We do two sound checks. We, the band sits down and, you know, near the end, obviously, we were doing it so much. We'd play maybe 10 or 15 minutes just to make sure everything was dialed in because we have our own monitor mixes that never change. The, the venues change, so things will still change. The people that are singing on stage tend to need more changes than me. I'm kind of like, sounds great, usually. We play a, a few songs and then... Uh, Pink comes on stage later, then we sound check with her and we check it. And sometimes it's very quick if it's really working well for her. If there are sound issues, we may it may be longer. And then we take a dinner break and might be a little nap break. And before we know it, it's time to go back on stage and do the show again. This is what I want to swing.